Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today's movement sequence is a continuation of the last video of last video's movement sequence, which was about rolling from sitting to lying down on your back or rolling from lying down on your back to come to side sitting. So it's important that you have done the last video. And I split this lesson into several videos, at least two, to have a break. And sometimes we need this kind of break. We learn something and then we need the break. Your brain has two different ways of learning. One is the focused mode. That's when you're paying close attention to something. The other is the diffuse mode. That's when you don't seem to be thinking about anything in particular. Learning involves going back and forth between the focused and the diffuse modes. So, let's get right to it. Let's start with the movement. And for this I need to zoom a little. And here we are. And I need to tilt a little. And a little more. Maybe a tiny, teensy little more. Looks good to me. All right, safety first. We start in side sitting, so please come in side sitting. We start with the left foot. And you can have your right leg wherever you please, because we start with the left foot. And preferably, I uh, suggest to do this barefoot. I just don't want to barefoot. I just don't want to have my barefoot in your screen with the wide angle lens. So I use socks. There's Japanese socks where the four toes are in one box and the big toe is in another box. And we have socks that are toe socks where every toe is in its separate box. <clears throat> so we need the Japanese style socks or I just create this kind of socks by pushing the socks so, or barefoot. First movement. With your left hand come to hold your left heel from underneath. So you wedge up you carry your left heel, your left foot, like you would carry a plate, like if you would be a waiter in a restaurant. So wedge your left hand under your left heel. And with the right hand, bring your right thumb from underneath in between your big toe and the other four toes. So you hold your foot, your left foot with both hands and then you should be able to do that movement roll onto your back. If you're not yet comfortable with that movement, please refer to the previous video. So that's the prerequisite of this video. To be able to roll over yeah, and to come to lie on the back and to roll up again. And in today's class, a big focus is on the concept of orientation. Orientation. Where are we in space to know where is left, where is right, where is in front and where is in the back. And let's set a starting position. Let's say, let's say you're facing the screen and let's say your screen doesn't move so the screen is your front. So that's our starting position, that's our in front, let's say that's our original front where we start the movement and then please come to roll down on the floor and see where you end up. And you will notice that you are more or less perpendicular to your original front. So your head is now to where your original left was and your feet are where your original right was. Of course, in relation to yourself, And then roll up again in side sitting and you are facing front, the original front. So that's what I want you to be very clear of. So <clears throat> above is where your head is, that's up, and down is 
where usually your feet are, but now is where your pelvis is, where your sit bones are, and left. We can do that as humans. We can divide space and say one side is left. So my left is your, is your screen's right. So this is the right side of your screen, but it's my left. And this is my right side, but it's your left part of the screen. <laughs> right and left. Uh, so um, to understand right and left, we need to say my right or your right and my left and your left. And my in front is your in front. But my back is also your in front. Let's return to the movement. Please roll down and make sure you're really sideways. So when you sit, please come up to sit in a position where you exactly face forwards, face front the screen. And when you roll to lie down, make sure you're exactly in a 90 degree angle to the screen so that your left is your original front. And when you're lying down, of course, your forwards is where the ceiling is and your backwards is where the floor is and your upwards is where your original left was. But up is up and down is down. So that's something to th think about. Think about. Please do the same thing to the other side. Come down to roll onto your back and then come to roll up to face your original back. So you roll up onto your right side. Let's do this. Roll down on the back. So you're exactly in the middle. Then take with your right hand, your right heel, the same as it was in the last lesson, or the same just like before. With your right hand, you serve your right foot. And with your left hand, you take you sneak your thumb in between the space between your big toe and the small toes. So we do the same thing to the other side. And you come up to side sit facing your exact back. So, sorry, <laughs> did I turn my back on you? <clears throat> Just in a movement kind of sense, I would never turn my back on you. So let's return. On the back and then to the original front. Play with that um, on your own a couple of times so you're really clear about which direction you're facing and then we can use this in other lessons or you can use this in your daily life to be suddenly more aware of where your orientation is and where other people's orientation is. So that's, that's some kind of awareness exercise. I think it's a pretty good awareness exercise, actually. I wasn't aware that I just made up such an excellent exercise. And then we had, we had the other lesson, also here on YouTube a couple of uh, days, this month, a couple of weeks ago, where we came from standing on all fours to side sitting and to lying down and side sitting and all fours and even standing. So that's also about orientation. When do we face where? And we had this lesson with turning where we would turn 90 degrees or 180 degrees and some of you might have been able to turn 270 degrees and that starts to be interesting once you switch from side to side because you really change your orientation and you become aware of where things are in relation to yourself more precisely or just become more aware of which feels refreshing like a good lemonade on a hot summer's day. <clears throat> so the second thing I want to do today is to improve this roll up and roll down. 
But how do we improve such a movement? And for example, we can use auxiliary movements that don't have to see much in common with the original movement, but surprisingly improve the original movement quite a lot. So, one of the auxiliary movements I would suggest to improve the rolling. You see, I'm not giving you straight answers. I'm giving you movement explorations where you can find the answers yourself and thus make the answers your own. Because we have to bridge the gap between speaking and movement. We still need to bridge the gap because obviously there is a gap between talking and doing. I'm sure you can come up with examples by yourself. And if I would tell you to bring your left knee closer to your left shoulder and that will improve your rolling up, I would take a big discovery away from you because it's so much fun to like, this would be a major spoiler, and I don't want to spoil it, and let's discover that. So I, I want to give you opportunity to discover these things on your own. So let's do one of these auxiliary movements I've been talking about. Please come to lie on your back, preferably with, your, with our new method of rolling. <clears throat> and then, I change my orientation. My up is your in front now. And please, with your left hand, get hold of your left foot. And with your right hand, get hold of your left foot. Just exactly in the way as we had it. And you could let go of your left hand. Or keep it just as you like. Maybe, maybe just make formal loop with your left foot and your right hand. And there's a loop, there's a loop formed by your right arm and your left leg. So there's a hole and then there's one, one leg left over the right leg. And we use this right leg to counterbalance and to direct the movement somehow. So you got this right leg and you got a loop. So please, <laughs> what could be the task? Please thread your right leg in between the loop that is formed in with your left leg and your right arm. So sneak your right foot somehow through this loop. You could use your left hand to help and play with the right leg. You can roll, you can do whatever you like. The only constraint is to keep this loop that is formed between your left leg and your right arm. Keep this loop and you can twist around as much as you want. And in order to improve the threading, in order to improve the way you sneak your right leg in between this loop, And let's do this for a minute or two minutes. Try to, don't force anything. Don't become too excited. Keep relaxed, keep a relaxed state of mind, affairs, <laughs> relaxed state of affairs, and just um, find ways to do this. And don't hurt yourself, don't stretch, don't force anything, it will come it will become easier with every time you do it. So, um, please. We had this lesson where we bring the knee in and out of the elbow. It's actually a hamstring lesson. But, but just play, just, just see what you discover. And I'm sure you will come up with your own discoveries.
All right, so I hope you enjoyed that time. Please bring that to an end. Um, wherever you are in your experimenting, discovery, your safari <laughs> of finding new movements. And take either a small rest, just extend everything and come to lie on your back just for a few seconds or come up to side sitting. Okay, yes, so if you have taken a short rest, come up to side sitting, roll up, so you're facing front, hello. And then again, take with your left hand, take your left heel, and with your right hand, take your sm four smaller toes of your left foot, so that's the starting position, and then again, try the roll. Roll down from sitting, from side sitting to lying on your back and up again and see how that works now. If there was, if there's any noticeable improvement and if it improved, try to find why. <laughs> Put into words why it is easier. Write that in the comments. Please share your discoveries. Maybe you had the same discoveries, maybe you discovered even more things and I'm sure you can or you did, hopefully. I think there's great value in these lessons because we take the time to discover ourselves. We're not following rules, we're not following the discoveries of others, but we do these movements, we create these movement sequences in order to create a space for learning and discovery where we can improve and make these movement improvements our own. So what we would have to do now is to form a loop with the left arm and the right leg and sneak the left leg through this loop, sneak, yes, move, thread the left leg through the loop a couple of times. Maybe we don't need as much time anymore as with the first side or maybe we need even more time. And maybe you discover new ways to come up. Maybe you discover... <laughs> See, I can come up with holding my right foot, but I wouldn't know how to go down like this. Maybe you can find a way how to combine sitting facing front to roll onto your back and then sitting facing back. Maybe there's ways to improve that movement. So I leave that up to you. I hope to have been an inspiration. 
an informant to inform you about the possibilities of discovery and I wish you a good time. <laughs> yes, a good time with your movements, with your brain, with your learning on the floor. If you like this video, please like the video, share the video, leave a comment and thanks for watching. See you in the next video. And walking became so much easier. This was actually a very nice lesson for the hip joints and for the legs. My God, so much easier, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Movement can be fun. Having a body can be so much fun. Who would have thought such an easy movement, such a simple movement can lead to such improvement? <laughs>